Yes. Welcome to Inspirational Journeys, everyone. My name is Ann Harrison Barnes, and today my guest is author, musician, musical playwright, musical teacher, and uh, Lisa Snyderman. Welcome to the show, Lisa. Thank you so much, Ann. It's really nice to be here. Thank you. I know I, I gave you a bit of an intro, but I want you to tell us about a little bit about yourself and your background, because nobody tells your story better than you. <laughs> yes. So yeah, as you noted, I wear a lot of hats. But the way I like to think of myself as of late is that I am an artist who's been thriving with a chronic illness for more than 11 and a half years while creating to heal. And that really sums up a lot of my story because it's while going through all of the difficulties and struggle and battle, it's finding, you know, the, the way to uh, have the right mindset, have the right uh, inspiration and joy and hope and triumph that I need in order to keep thriving. And that's primarily through creativity. And you know what's really interesting um, when, when we decided to do this uh i did not know at the time but but this past friday um crimson club publishing has this thing where we each either purchase or promote each other's books to help uh, to help the authors and to um to promote their books to that basically cross promoting if you will and your book was on friday and i told carly i said you know what she's going to be on the podcast so um, I'm going to send that to her. So tell me, what inspired you to be a writer? So I have been inspired creatively in different ways. I think I'll answer that first, and then I'll kind of move towards the writing. Okay. So I've always been creative as far back as I can recall, and that took different forms. When I was a child, it was musicality, a lot of you know singing and performing in plays in school and community theater uh, and then as i grew you know in high school i actually took journalism so that actually sparked some of my writing interest but i've always had this creativity and then i actually uh, had a transition in my life when um, i was trying to reinvent myself and i discovered my muse so i discovered the songwriting side of me and then it wasn't until 2010 when I had a flare of my illness that after that point, I really delved into the, you know, the creative side in order to cope and process, you know, what I was going through, um, as well as in some ways to hide behind my, my personality. So I didn't have to delve into the darkness, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then really what inspired my, my writing, my memoir, is because after I went through all of my journey, I realized that I still had a need and a want to fill something that was bigger than myself. It was a yearning. And I think it's because when you express yourself creatively, there's a lot that comes out and helps you. But until you're at a place where you're giving back and able to help others, maybe you know, persevere through their darkness and their struggles, uh, that's what I was missing. So I, I realized I had a need and a want to share my story so that I could help others who are going through transformations. Oh, okay. So tell me, and, and I, I don't want to, you know, if you're uncomfortable about it, but describe to our listeners the type of illness that you suffered. Yeah. So the best way to describe this is a progressive muscle weakness disease. It's a rare autoimmune condition. Uh, and I've been dealing with it since 2008. So as I said, it's around 11 and a half years. So imagine this, you know, it's uh, you're just about to get married, you're working full time, and you're also, you know, doing something creatively, you're about to go on tour to promote a new album, and you get a rash. And it, it's, uh, you know, something that you go to the dermatologist thinking he's going to give you some cream and that you know, you're, you're gonna be fine. It's probably derma, dermatitis or something. And instead he tells you that you have a rare autoimmune disease and that he refers you to a rheumatologist and you're 35 years old. You know? So from my perspective, that's exactly my, how it was, the stage was set for how I discovered my autoimmune disease. And here I was about to get married and you know, start a whole new life. And I was 
kind of plunged into a world that I soon, you know, became more familiar with, but it was a world of barrage of tests, uh, you know, MRIs and um, any kind of test, EMGs, you know, because it's a muscle disease, uh, uh, biopsies, all of these things, and a lot of risks for, you know, things like cancer. So there were all of these things that happened at once, but the worst of it was in 2010 when I had a flare and I had no ability to move any of my muscles. So I was in the hospital for about a month and had to relearn how to walk how to stand, how to sit, and eventually how to play my guitar and sing again, you know, through months and months of a vigorous rehab. Wow. So what does, describe this, um, what is this creating to heal? Explain that if you don't mind. Yeah, that's a great question. For me, creating has done a lot of different things. As I was mentioning in the beginning, it can be a place where I go to forget to not process my illness, right, at all. I just go somewhere completely different. So in my case, I create fantasy musicals, complete ones, like fully. If you ever have heard a radio show, imagine you Mm -hmm. have characters and you have sound effects and sound design and a story and all of narration, all of that. That's what I was creating on a script. And then I would record that onto audiobooks. And my audience has been young adults as well as adults who enjoy fantasy. Well, what I realized is that helped me express, okay? And it it helped me to not think about my illness. But then there's also the time, for example, writing my memoir that is all about writing and processing my illness. So I've been able to use creativity, you know, to get closer and be closer to something that was hard for me to be vulnerable about as well as to completely escape and hide behind my artistry so I didn't have to think about it. So when I talk about creating to heal, healing takes place in so many ways. Uh, I think, you know, healing my soul, healing my spirit. When I'm creative, it's nurturing those parts of me. Uh, I always like to say that you, I don't know if, you know, for yourself, if you ever have an activity or something that you're passionate about, and oh, you're yeah. involved. At, you're a writer, so you uh, understand. Yeah, right. I'm a writer. Right? Exactly. You're a fellow writer, but for some of the listeners and viewers, you know, for, for them, they may have their own passions and joys. And what I like to say is, you know, do you ever get those times when time just completely either stops mm-hmm. or you look at the clock the next time and it's hours have gone by? Yeah. And it's your, you know, you drop your ego, you drop your, sometimes your needs, like I forget to drink or have food or something. And I realize, oh my gosh, I need to go eat something. Right. And that's that time when I say I'm lost in the flow. Well, for me, that's very healing, you know, the expressive part. But what I've also learned is it's healing to share. So this whole idea of writing my memoir and now talking to people and telling my story is also very healing. What I'm finding is it's an opening and it's enabling others to share their stories. I'll give you the example that I, I just went through. I'm really fortunate to have the audiobook that I adapted from my memoir be um, in consideration for a Grammy Award. Well, what happened during the process that was so beautiful is that people were writing me and telling me about their own experience. You know, they'd say, you know, they're coming out of the woodwork so to speak. Somebody might write and say, my mom has MS, you know, and and tell me a little bit about their story, or I have lupus, or, you know, my daughter went through this autoimmune condition. And my point is that it was, it was basically an opening. And I realized that by me giving my gift, it allows others to be able to share theirs. Wow, that's amazing. And you talk about music in your book, and I'm not a musician. I tried to learn how to play piano. I love to sing. But I've noticed that music, just listening to music, um, and for you, I'm sure creating music is a a great source of healing because I've been through some struggles in my life and I found it and journaling to be a great source of healing. Did you do any journaling at all? Absolutely. Yeah, that's, you know, one of my go-tos as far as tips for other people is definitely journaling. You know, I think what's lovely about it is it doesn't always have to be a 
uh, scripted, you know, these are the things I have to journal about. It's almost like I, I use my journal as a free for all brainstorm, anything mm -hmm. that can be put on paper. Yeah. I do sometimes. In common. Yes. And isn't it wild? Like I've, I've talked to other writers that I think the process, you know, for the writing processes or the creative process can be similar where sometimes my journal can be literally a list of the things I need to do or did do. And I, it's a chronicle. And other times it's feelings, you know, other times it's inspiration. You know, I may come across nice. um, things that I want to put back in lyric form or maybe a song title that I want to think about, or, you know, my next musical dealing with uh, the underworld, you know, whatever it is, anything that I have, I, I'm a writer and I, I love to process in that way on the, you know, on paper. Well, so to speak. I'm actually on my computer nowadays. <laughs> right, right. Um, so do you get inspired for your musicals by dreams or anything like that? What a great question. I, I think I get a lot of my inspiration by basically feeling like I'm still a kid and I'm a big kid who hasn't grown up. And the reason I say that is because I still believe in magic and fairy tales and other things. And so things come to me in all manner. I sometimes get inspiration from watching a movie, you know, and remembering the feeling of being a kid, you know, even watching a Disney movie. I know it sounds silly, you know, as an adult, mm -hmm. but something like that where the, the magic is still there. That's what um, fantasy is made of. Well, that's why I, I indulge in fantasy. I just have <laughs> never grown out of reading you know, and really enjoying the fantasy. So when I was growing up, you know, some people did Harry Potter. That was their genre and age. I was well, I a little it. older for Harry Potter, but I still, you know, I ended up gulping up all the Harry Potter books. But when I was younger, it was um, The Hobbit, you know, it was J.R.R. Tolkien and it was Piers Anthony, who was a fantasy writer. And it was, you know, so there was, a, what is it? A Wrinkle in Time and C.S. Lewis. Mm -hmm. and so I had all of that growing up. Um, and I just, you know, I never grew out of that part of it. But I think what I loved about fantasy is that also it wasn't just fluff. There's actually a lot of, you know, thematically, there were things that I got out of it. You know, the hero's journey, we'll talk about that. The hero's journey is such a great lesson for people who are dealing with chronic illnesses, you know, and, and life challenges. Uh, because, you know, you find for me, for example, I worked with Cure JM, which is uh, juvenile myositis. They are kids mm -hmm. who have the same disease I have. And I look at them as warriors for fighting and battling this disease as kids, you know, people that sometimes have to be in the hospital receiving infusions, four years old. They don't know any differently, but I feel like it's the hero's journey, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a lot, I think, in fantasy that I actually um, – have been able to incorporate into my own life, which has been lovely. Wow. And do you still teach musical work, musical theater workshops? So right at my, my current situation, I actually had a flare of my autoimmune disease and I've been mm -hmm. about a homebound for the last year. So here's what I learned about my own creativity. It is my greatest joy and passion. And I would, you know, encourage anybody to be able to dwell and, um, play in their creativity, but it's with caution too, because I don't know if you're like me, but do you ever tend to overdo and you get so excited by something that you just put your whole self in and don't always think about your needs. Like we were talking about when time mm -hmm. stops and you know, you're in flow. So what happened for me is I think I overdid, uh, and my body was trying to tell me many times, you, you know, you can't keep this up. You need to slow, slower the pace or you need to get these needs met. And instead, I was pushing ahead as if I didn't live with a chronic illness. So it was a reminder to me that this is a journey. And, you know, uh, the creating with illness sometimes looks like this. Uh, so, you know, to answer your question, I had to pull back from being out in the world and, you know, for teaching a, a musical theater workshop, I just contacted my theater contact and said, you know, we're going to have to hold off actually until spring because I'm refused, uh, excuse me, I'm receiving infusions right now every month to help with my strength, energy, and stamina. So while I'm doing that, I'm allowing myself to be creative at home and doing a lot of things online. You know, my biggest project right now, my passion project is to help others. 
So I am actually doing a virtual summit next year where I am interviewing the same way by video uh, 50 or more experts who have some connection to chronic illness. It may be a spiritual, or a spiritual healer or teacher. It might be a medical professional. It might be an alternative practitioner, a creative therapist like arts, drama, and music, um, even other artists who are battling illness. And what I'm learning from all of these interviews is I'm getting strategies and resources and tips and practices that other people, and many of them homebound with limited energy, uh, will be able to take away to help them thrive. Wow. So have you, oh, have you been a voracious reader all your life? Yeah. The answer is absolutely <laughs> as a younger <laughs> adult and in college. Oh, wow. I'm going to be honest. When I ended up getting my illness, one thing that changed for me is my concentration and especially for long form. So my reading has kind of turned a lot more now into audiobooks, you know, that kind mm. of way of absorbing material and information. Um, I have a harder time with long books. And it is funny, right, as a writer, too. Right. But I still find inspiration, you know, for sure, from books. Um, and, you know, it ends up being something that uh, I, I find that however you digest, I mean, for yourself, you, do you listen to a lot on audiobook? I do, but I also, I mean, I have like my, uh, some books on my phone that my, um, text to speech, my, what, what the Apple screen reader calls the voiceover. And they, yes. they've also got this thing called speak, um, speak the screen. So I will read the Apple books like that. I've got some, but then if you have an echo dot or an echo device, um, the uh, uh she who no, must not be named because if she is named she will be, go off um she will turn your kindle into audio she'll read your kindles to you how lovely yeah right. but so does it does that mean for you right the reading experience doesn't just have to be in a physical book form you can mm -hmm. get the experience of writers and their stories in many ways mm-hmm I think that's such a great thing that we have so many options and you're right. We've got the eBooks and the Kindle and, you know, so many ways that we can absorb uh, material. It's wonderful. And for, for blind people, there's Braille, but Braille takes yeah. up a lot of room. So I usually do Kindle audible or the national library service has this um, program. It's through the library of Congress. They have this program that where you can download books onto your mobile device or download them onto digital cartridge. Um, it's the Braille and audio reading download. Yeah. I don't know if you, if you're familiar with BARD or not, but, um, because you have a physical disability, you may want to find out where your, um, your talking book library is located and you can get audiobooks that way. That's wonderful. Yeah. And even sharing, you know, I'd love to learn later about sharing the audiobook. Maybe there's a way to get that into those channels. Um, I don't think you can share from like with Bard, you can't share from one to another. And there's another thing called Bookshare um, where you can download um, books. You can do it audio, but it's like text to speech or you can use mm -hmm. like this app. I have an app on my iPad called Voice Dream Reader uh, that I can when I use Bookshare, I can get its text to speech, but it reads books to me, too. So we can definitely That's talk really about that later. That's wonderful, and I just, I'm so glad there's so many things that exist so that it makes it so that, you know, you, you can have the same experience. It doesn't have to be something that's uh, yeah, and I not thought Bard afforded. Was, yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead, please. I was going to say, um, I'm glad that I used to think Bard was the be-all and no, and now that I've been introduced to Kindles and Audible, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Have you ever gotten any of your um, your musical audiobooks? Have you ever gotten them on? Are they on Audible? Yes. Um, I've got, actually, I think two of my musical audiobooks are on Audible, as well as my memoir is now on Audible. Oh, I know your memoir is on Audible. Have you ever thought about some of your other audio, musical audiobooks? Have you ever thought about um, getting them on Audible Originals? Or have you ever no. heard of Audible Originals? 
I think I will look into it after this because I'm not sure if it's what I think it is. Uh, okay, if, so it, if it's producing a new work through Audible, that's what I think it is. It is, but it's more in line with, sometimes it's just books that are narrated, but a lot of times, and since I have an Audible membership, you get the regular, your, your one monthly credit where you can choose an audiobook, and then you get two free Audible originals every month. And some of these are actually audio dramas. That have been audio. audio. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I, thank yeah. you for sharing that. Yeah, that's, that's something I didn't learn, uh, didn't know before. Yeah, so anybody who has not gotten their Audible uh, subscription or do, has an Audible subscription and doesn't know about Audible Originals, first Friday of every month, you need to check those out because you get two free along with your, your membership. So I'm gonna, some, now, sometimes I will admit there are, I may not pick one out. I may, like, one month I didn't pick any out because I wasn't, wasn't anything that I was interested in. So some of them are for kids, but then every, every so often, they'll have some really good ones. Do, do you get to pick the from a list and they say like these are the originals six, this month? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are six every month and then you get to yep. pick two. Neat. Six. Yeah, that's great. And then there are months where I want where there are three that I would love to have. <laughs> 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 right. So I would I would definitely suggest that you look into that because you could turn your audio dramas into you know, your um sorry i got distracted there for a second your musical audiobooks into audible originals yeah i'll look into it thank you yeah so do you have i know you've got this project of helping people but do you have any other musical projects coming up that one is taking up a lot of my energy uh, right now because it's actually going to take a year to create. I learned wow. from last year. Last year, what I did is I interviewed 45 different artists from around the world in the same fashion as we're doing a video interview. And they were all people who are also creating to heal. So they all had different kinds of either, you know, life challenges or illness or something, a transformative moment that they then turned to creativity. And, you know, so I was able to share a lot of these artists stories art and music and i did that through a a, um, a video uh, online and also i ended up doing uh, producing a live event and so that was um, the bulk of my interest and once i did that project i realized that i really wanted after let me put it this way after 11 years living with illness i realized my remaining challenges were living at home and continuing to create connect and find community. So I figured that I wanted to help others in that situation to, you know, increase it. It also helps my community if I can help others. Uh, so, you know, that's the long way of saying that that first project of 2018 sparked my virtual summit, which I'm now, you know, doing the smart way and taking a whole year to uh, have the interviews and to get it all together. And that will help my own um, energy, right? Because I'm living with limited energy. I have to be mindful mm -hmm. of the fact that it's going to take me a year and that's okay. I tried to do 45 interviews in three months last year. Ooh. So that was a lot on my, you know, mentally and also on my physical body. So it's not that I can't continue to be creative and find purpose and passion and contribution. It's just that I need to do that smartly. Ah, okay. So tell, to, is, tell me about the AD, the, the muse. Tell me who, yeah. how did you come so, up with that? AD in Greek means song, S-O-N-G. And in 2006, I was looking for something to embody my new artist. You know, I was an artist and I wanted my branding and my name. And it kind of came to me that I wanted affiliation with the muse. And Aedi is the first muse of song in Greek mythology. So by, by choosing to have an affinity with the muse, it was reminding me to inspire and to remain continually inspired. So what's really neat to me about Aedi is that that idea and concept of muse has really shaped my path. First, it was through the music, but then it, I've become a muse to so many people because of how I'm relating and sharing both the art and the music, but also my story. 
So it's, I'm a muse to others, you know? And so that has actually really formed my identity through the years. Wow. That's <laughs> amazing. And I've been looking for your music on Amazon Music, but apparently it hasn't been added to the Music Unlimited yet. <laughs> You can find uh, a lot of AED on iTunes and also Amazon. So you can look up AED. Um, I can give you, you know, the name, for example, if, if you didn't want an audio book style and just an album, look at Skeletons of the Muse. And you can hear a lot of the kinds of quirky folk pop that I've done. And it's very bright and light. It kind of has a, a advertising jingle feel to it. So uh, it's very uplifting, some people have said. But I will also say that, you know, that doesn't pigeonhole me because I actually just worked with uh, more than 20 artists. I was mentioning that I had interviewed artists for this creating to heal mm -hmm. uh, the project for last year. I worked right. with more than 20 of them in the beginning of this year to contribute their vocals to a new song that I had just recorded. Um, I was recording, I should say, called Keep Shining. And the story behind this is that in December, just as I was putting the live event together, I wanted to write an anthem that captured all of our stories in a way that um, was, you know, uplifting to others. And the idea behind Keep Shining is that we are, you know, experiencing all kinds of things in life, whether it's the darkness or the illness or depression or, you know, the myriad of emotions that we go through. And mm -hmm. sometimes it makes it very difficult to feel like we can have our old identities and still show up. You know, for myself, mine was once I got sick, I realized that I didn't have the same core strength and energy and confidence to give to my performances. Not only that, I couldn't even perform because I didn't have, you know, the stamina and energy. But my right. point is that the song was a combination of me and my inner voicing my uh, insecurities and doubts and fears. But at the same time in the chorus, these voices would get louder and louder and louder saying, keep shining, oh beautiful one, the world oh, needs your light. Yes, the, the bonus track in the audio book. Yes, okay, so you've heard it. Well, I'm, I created yes. a video as well that shared my story through video and it goes through part of my hospitalization at the top, me getting an MRI, and then you see me getting infusions. You can tell there's, you know, a health journey. And then there's a part where I kind of reject music. I'm dropping my guitar, you know, that my husband's placing in my lap. I'm doing these things, all saying, I, I, I'm not the same person. I don't want to do that, right? And then yet, as the voices keep coming and I hear these voices keep shining, oh, beautiful one, the world needs your light you know, and as they get louder and louder, it drowns out my own voices, my own inner, you know, secure insecurity. And then the, the, um, the video goes on to show the recovery, you know, I'm getting stronger. I'm walking with my cane, you know, my husband's taking me in a walker and playing with the dog. And then eventually I end up on stage playing for other people again. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm learning to sing and play again. So people who are watching, what I hope they're going to gain from that is hope, you know, that anything, no matter what they go through, it may change them. I'm not saying it's not going to be transformative, but there's ways to keep your dreams alive. Right. And if you really close your eyes and listen to that, that piece, it's just, it's very peaceful and calming. And yet it also, I don't, I don't know if people have told you this, but it can also fuel your creative, creative, uh, creative energy. Try to say that three times fast, but yeah. I think I'll let you do that. <laughs> no, that's okay. I'll, I'll leave it on that. But no, the creative energy, it fuels your, your creativity. Music oh. does that. I'm so glad that you feel that, you know, and it's nice to get that feedback. And I'm, and I'm glad music can do that for you. I definitely feel it for myself. Uh, there's just times that music is an unlocking, you know, whether it's mm -hmm. something that makes me feel sadness, makes me feel joy, makes me want to get up and dance, you know, to the music. It's anything that actually just unlocks that ability for myself to be comfortable feeling something. Right, and then it's that natural music of the world around us, like, for me, I don't know if this happens for you, but for me, I can go out on the front porch and listen to the wind chimes, and they will speak inspiration. 
Oh, that's so great. Yes, I love getting and hearing the music in all things. There's something that's so lovely. That to me is mindfulness too, where you're mm-hmm. really present in that moment. And right. you know, it, that's why to me the, the chimes can speak to you is because you're completely attentive and open to hearing them. Right. I, you know, as opposed to there's times when we're on our phones, you know, our minds are racing. We might say, oh, I need to be thinking about my shopping list for dinner tonight. You know, that kind of a thing where the wind chimes might still be there, but I'm not paying attention in the way that I could be if I just listened. Yeah. Yeah. I, I definitely agree with that. You've got to be in the moment and attentive to that for them to, to really reach out to you. And, um, so did you have a mentor when it came to your music and writing or? Oh, I have so many people that I feel like are part of my team Um, and my mentors come in all different ways. I've had mentors for my illness in the form of my mother and my mother-in-law. My mother-in-law has lupus, which is a similar illness to what I have. So we were able to share our journeys. Uh, My mom has battled lots of autoimmune disease and, you know, has also shown me uh, how to, be able to be uh, continue to keep going on it that a lot of it is about attitude so I've had mentors in that fashion and then I've also had people that have worked with like my amazing producer who has a similar um, vision and can actually get my vision about where I'm going so whether we're doing a, a musical album together like the mm-hmm. like the audiobook or whether we worked on an album or he just came up earlier this year and recorded the song for me He's just the kind of person who, when I share something, he is an amazing, you know, recipient of of understanding how to get that done. So from that perspective, that's a mentor. But honestly, the other, the biggest mentor too to me is my husband. He has been, you know, a rock, a pillar, a partner, and I really wouldn't be where I am today without him. Um, So I look at him, you know, obviously as a, a, a partner and a mentor in that way. Uh, But for him to be able to have such grace and ability to support, you know, no matter what my needs were at the time, uh, that to me was a huge asset, you know, and that's why when I wrote my book, it's not only how to transcend, you know, chronic illness through art, but also the power of attitude. Uh, Because I believe so strongly that, you know, our minds and our mindsets are you know, more than 90% of the battle. Right. Um, so if there's anyone you would love to, and then this is either past or present, if there's anybody you would love to sit down over coffee and have a conversation with, who would that be and why? Wow. And there are so many people that would be fantastic to talk to anybody from Martin Luther King, you know, like the people in my life who I would just say are, icons and inspirations, Maya Angelou, um, anybody, you know, I, I actually have, I feel like I have too many that I would be able to pick um, somebody specific, honestly, for that question. Uh, but I would, I would think about it and then be able to get back to you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know. I love that. I, um, actually, there was a question like that um, on another podcast that I was a part of. And I'm like, you know, I'm going to use this for mine because it, they, you know, there are so many people that are so profound and, you know, if we could have a dinner party with all of our, our mentors, that would be absolutely great. <laughs> exactly. Great. You know, I mean, there's people who've paved the way for women's rights, you know, for, uh, you know, for environmental, like I, I was uh, an environmental scientist for 10 years. And so like, I, I just think about, you know, even women pioneers that I ended up reading about who paved the way at the Hull House in Chicago for the movement, um, you know, sanitation, like any, anybody from that angle, because I, I pursued environmental science in my degree to what sparks me now, you know what I mean? My, my creative side, um, Stephen Schwartz, you know, obviously still alive, uh, you know, has been an inspiration in terms of musicals um, with Wicked and Godspell and, you know, a lot of things that he's done and things, on, on that nature, but I could r- just rattle off a whole bunch of different people, mm-hmm. right? And there's musicians and, for me that inspired uh, me. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. I, it just depends that it's almost like pick a category, right? <laughs> like, okay, you have these five musicians. I have these five writers. I'd have these five poets. Yeah, right. Five, I know. Know, like, I don't know. I know. <laughs> that's, that's one of those crazy questions, but it was my fun question. Oh, I don't mind taking a stab. You know, I just, I will be honest and say sometimes I'm not always going to be on the ball about like, I'll pick this. You know, it's the same question I've got. What do you know? You're on a desert island, and what are the three items you want to bring, or what book? Oh, what Lord have mercy. What and one like book? The, <laughs> and I do not like those kind of questions because that's like picking. And I've had somebody ask me, "What? Which was your favorite book?" You might as well ask me, and I've only oh. one daughter. You might as well ask me to pick my favorite baby because all my all four of my books are my creative babies. I know I've got to nurture them and edit them, and one of them's getting a facelift and they're all yeah. probably going to wind up being a face. But, and the other um, thing for me is I like, I am so interested in people in general. So the whole idea of sitting down with people to learn their stories, like that is, it's a harder question because, oh my gosh, there's so many amazing people and stories that right. I feel like I'd be honored to sit down with any of the people, you know? Yeah, I know. And that's one of the reasons why I started this podcast and I've been praying about it. And I felt, you know, I listened to podcasts to do research, but I felt called to do this because honestly, I want to, it's my way to meet people when I can't travel because, yeah. you know, with transportation and stuff, but it's my way to meet people and, and share their stories with the world. It's wonderful, Anne. I, I love that you do this, that you make this available and you get to connect too with other people. Right. And look, we found common ground. You know, we're able to see these commonalities in our, some of our writing process. Mm -hmm. the, you know, the, I, I love that aspect when I'm doing my interviewing with people and realizing that, you know, I may be interviewing somebody who's the, all about diet, but you, you know, you, you start finding these commonalities and realize that we're not so different. Right. And it's exciting when you, when you actually do find somebody that you've got all these commonalities with. It's, it's exciting to make that connection. Yes. Yeah. So where can people find you online? I am very heavy into social media these days because I'm home a lot. So you can find me often. My two channels are Facebook and Twitter. So uh, Facebook, Look, it's 80 Muse Music. I can have Anne probably, you know, write a link, but it's A-O-E-D-E-M-U-S-E-M-U-S-I-C. And then on Twitter, it's 80 Muse, A-O-E-D-E-M-U-S-E. -E -E. Then I also have websites. You can find all that we're talking about, about the memoir and uh, who I wrote it for and my inspirations and how to get it on a light in the darkness dot info. That's a light in the darkness dot info also on amazon uh, you can find the book itself and crimson cloak publishing which is my publisher and how ann and i connected right oh and by the way before we um go don't forget the three for five deal on crimson cloak publishing.com three books for 3.99 or less for five dollars through the month of october it's a wonderful promotion there's so many right. great authors that i happen to be you know uh, um, honored to be part of this amazing author community and it's a great promotion so I definitely uh, subscribe to that right I do I do recommend that because it's and especially if it's Kindle that's the best deal you can get and I don't know what next month will be but I also um I'll also run a run a little blurb on my podcast too so for those listening okay. we'll hear that and you'll see the link so do you have any, before I let you go, do you have any tips and one piece of advice you'd like to share with the listeners? Sure. Um, this actually is a couple tips. That I was thinking about this for creative inspiration, since that's the area that I feel like I can really contribute more to because of my journey. Mm -hmm. It's things like, okay, so say you're feeling stuck, uh, either in, as a writer or in any, anything you're pursuing, you're kind of feeling that you need some inspiration creatively. Some of the things I like to do is first unplug, get off the computer, <laughs> go take a walk in nature, for example, and let, you know, let that restoration happen, whatever's happening, you're healing yourself while you're walking, etc. Go on an adventure, go somewhere new, you know, that you haven't been and tried before. Uh, do something new. So say you like to cook, okay, try gardening. 
you know, try your hand, uh, just doodle, play, uh, do things that are good for the soul, that spark joy. Uh, the other thing I might try to do is uh, listen to music. As we were talking about earlier, music can be such a opening, uh, you know, an unlocking thing. So sometimes if you hear your favorite music or you hear something new, it might inspire different things. Uh, keep a calendar. So what I like to do is actually have a calendar for when I'm going to write. Uh, and it, it might, you know, uh, differ between songwriting and journal writing or book writing or something. But I try to keep that and keep a regular schedule about it. And then, as we talked about before, keeping a journal for anything and just not even um, censoring or editing, you know, just letting that all happen. And then the other one that I like to do sometimes is just talk to friends. So get out of my own element and get inspired by other people and their stories um, and most people do this too, but even watching a, a TV or movie can, you know, spark something that way too. So that's a, a whole list of things that you might want to do to stay creatively inspired. Mm -hmm. And read. If you're going to write, and read. read. I love that. I definitely read, read, read. Yeah, oh, yeah, everything, everywhere. I'm, I'm always taking things in. Like I said, just because I'm not doing long form, I'm always, even if it's on the computer, I just, I'm a voracious reader, I guess. I would say just not through long, bo long book. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So do you have a special, in any, because sometimes I like to leave challenges for my listeners. Do you have a challenge? Can you uh, describe what you mean? Like, There's, if you have, like, a, a, a challenge, like, if you have, like, a creative challenge you'd like, to share with the listeners is that like a writing prompt or is a that i'm sorry i don't know what a a challenge is. prompt or any kind of you know how you were talking about do something new anything to get people out of their comfort zone it could be writing prompt it could be anything creatively ah <laughs> well all of those to me are creative challenges to be honest if you've never done something you know uh if you i guess the way i would say it is those would be challenges all of right. them if you if you're not doing them now if you're already embarking on those you know then i would say you need to find the thing that sparks your passion and pursue that um here, here's one okay um doodling you know or or doing something on paper that's not anything related it doesn't have a purpose it's just to get some of that creative stuff out that's it you know you don't have and sometimes those doodles and those drawings take the shape and they they have things in them that you didn't even know was there so i would just say you know having time to um, play on paper Ooh. And I've heard another 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 author on another podcast say that too. So, I've I've tried that, but I don't know, um, I don't know how well that would come for me. But I might try that again myself. All right. So we challenge you today to go out there and read to get inspired, write something inspiring, and share your creation with the world. But when you've touched one life, you've touched a thousand. Thanks for joining us on Inspirational Journeys, and have a blessed day.